everybody that we will be recording from from now on, especially for people who won't be able to to make it, and then this video will be shared. So I'm I'm pretty happy to be here today. It's uh, because this is a milestone also for Eliza. One, one milestone was to begin Eliza two in the kickoff meeting, and another important milestone in month six, uh, which we just passed, was uh, or is the joint call to start this joint call process. No? So um, this is an exciting day for our group, uh, Work Package 8, as I said before, uh, and also for Eliza, too, for starting it off. Today, uh, hopefully, we will be brief, and then we'll be open for questions. So uh, steps one and two, we'll be doing quite uh, briefly, providing some basic information, uh, addressing um, Sorry, step step two would be addressing questions from the participants here today. And then uh, in step three, we will probably after the meeting, gather feedback and work on uh, improving as well. Next slide. And this is with the general outline. Uh, we might not even take uh, a half an hour, but uh, I will be moderating. Uh, Sophia, the executive director of Eliza, will be speaking next. And I will be talking about the general objectives and then different members of our team working on Eliza communities will be speaking. Hamza Sali from ITU about the rationale and scope, Sandor from BME about funding, and Camille finally two or three slides about application and reporting. And then we'll head into Q&A sessions where we will explain you either raise your hand or you can, while we're speaking, you can put questions in the, in the chat. So without further ado, Sophia, I would ask you to um, go next. Thank you. Thank you so much, Morris, and for Work Package 8 for starting this information session. And of course, most importantly, to all of you that have put side, time aside to be here with us today in this information session of the third joint call. I'm really happy to see uh, many of you, uh, 53 at the moment, and uh, really briefly, what I wanted to bring to you, it's of course to thank all of those that are already involved in communities and somehow uh, come again and, and show their motivation to develop, continue to develop these activities, but also for maybe, I hope also new faces and many others that are newly and more recently also joining ELISA initiative. So for the ones that are more new to the Alliance and just to, uh, in a nutshell, to remember you, so ELISA, European Engineering, Learning, Innovation and Science Alliance is part of a pioneering initiative uh, that is called uh, European Universities at the level of, of the European Commission. And this initiative that was awarded to us uh, firstly in November, 2020, um, has really a really ambitious aim to really support a deep transnational cooperation between universities in Europe and also um, uh, widely uh, outside Europe, we need to be a booster in terms of putting higher education at the forefront and at the center of a social, systemic, and sustainable transformation. This is really our motto and one of the key elements that united us. So today, uh, after a renewal and a new awarding of funding from the European Commission, uh, in November 2023, 20, uh, we have started this new phase with a renewed ambition and also with uh, more partners. So today we count with eight countries, 10 higher education institutions, uh, well embedded and with large trajectories and, and cultures and, and, and reputation. And, and together we are really aiming to boost uh, this um, European higher education area really make uh, our space of educating and impacting more openly, more free, and particularly preparing not just our learners, but ourselves as staff and academics um, and our organizations to face the challenges of tomorrow and today. So um, in a nutshell, this is Elisa and in this context, uh, we have decided in this in this phase to continue to create conditions, to create incentives for you, actors of these universities to connect 
and to provide opportunities to create impacts and opportunities also to shape mindsets and, and open uh, together, create a more openness uh, to the world. So if we could go to the uh, other slide. So one of the central elements of ELISA, the really organic platforms for innovation are ELISA communities. We already have been quite successful. So far we have more than 50 communities. Communities in the last days I've seen some petitions and movements for creating new ones. So this, this is really important. This is a center, uh, one of the core value proposals of our European university and also the place in which quite organically we have started to create real and tangible impact to all the stakeholders. So what is Elisa Communities? And Elisa Communities are what we call mission-driven collaboration platforms uh, framed under the sustainable development goals. These communities gather uh, different kinds of actors uh, around a transversal mission that aims to create impact with society. So around these communities, it is really an open, an open and collaborative space to collaborate, to innovate, to research, to teach, to learn, and really to create a deep a space where deep cooperation um, uh, can, can be developed. No? So uh, if we could go to the next slide, these are the communities bring along and to use the word of Maurice, create really a living ecosystem, a really organic one in which around the mission that these communities are handling, we can find activities, challenges provided to students, also sometimes projects that start with an educational purpose and sometimes transform to research projects. And here we have a space in which we connect with students, teachers, researchers, staff, faculties, and of course, also with society through public authorities, corporations, business, NGOs, and in which together we aim to tackle societal questions, societal problems that really need a more systemic and multi-stakeholder approach to be tackled. So uh, around this ecosystem, of course, is also the Elisa teams as work well, package eight as Mori it more is exemplified in Sally, and together with the Elisa uh, teams, also we aim to provide you communities, also a set of services to support you in your actions, and also to help you to unfold the potential of the activities that you carried on. So this is um, these first words were just to give you an idea in which the context that we are working and the context in which we want to develop these these calls for you to have a, a bit of more uh, capacity to develop activities and collaboration opportunities between uh, the different institutions. So for me, um, this was in a nutshell what I wanted to, to say. Uh, communities is really a flexible innovative model in which each one of us can find uh, a way to really develop these aims and, and also preoccupations for the future. So. Uh, what I can uh, hope is that you use that opportunity, and of course, I'm really happy to see a full a full house here today, and really wish you uh, good luck. And I know that the team will provide many other details to help you uh, and support you in the process uh, for the, joining this call. Thank you so much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Sophia. And I'll take this opportunity to thank very much the office for all the help they've provided. Uh, well, especially in work package eight, uh, we're being we're working on communities. Both Sophia and Daniela participated in meetings, etc. So uh, to continue, just a few slides about uh, the Lisa communities and Liza two. Some things that the basic outline, as Sophia described, is the same, but some things are being a bit more underlined or emphasized. So there, I'll just cover three aspects and three slides quite briefly. Um, we want to consolidate and strengthen the ecosystems. We want to facilitate engagement with society and orchestrate shared resources from bottom-up initiatives. What does that mean? Next slide. Uh, consolidating a lot of it is involved with the community platform. Existing communities have suggested some changes, some improvements, which we are working on at the moment to streamline processes and uh, enable a bit more uh, uh, community platform where we can engage. 
And consolidating also involves uh, money. So we're talking about semi-annual calls. So we will have organized calls, as you see on the webpage, every six months. So you know when they will be um, or called, when they will be launched, and um, approximately the budget. You know? And we've uh, tried to have more contact with student organizations, with the new student organization within Eliza 2. Next slide. Uh, responsible engagement with society has to do with challenges. As you will notice in joint call three, we're talking about uh, challenge-based learning. And we would like to in the future, in the very near future, hopefully this year, provide networking events and training opportunities. And as we will suggest at the end, um, Today, we'd like to announce the possibility of a uh, like a open office hours or coffees where we can meet and discuss um, opportunities within the communities. Next slide. And bottom up initiatives. So we're not only talking about students, but also working with other members in Eliza too, other teams that are working both with research and innovation uh, clusters and entrepreneurs, so industry as well. These are like the three basic tasks for the next four years for our um, our group, our work group. And so far, I think, um, you can go to the next slide, please. We've been um, fairly cohesive. Here you have only four members. Other members today are on holiday or not everybody could make it. But um, the we have, members in work package aid from all the different partners. We've been working together since November. And this is one of our, as I said before, milestones. And this wouldn't be possible today without the help of ITU, especially uh, Sally, who has been uh, co-leading me with this. And I will give the word to him to go directly into the details of joint call three. Sally. Thank you, Maurice. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm pleased to present the a rationale, a scope, and evaluation criteria of the third joint call for ELISA communities. So this call is to promote uh, basically interinstitutional activities within ELISA so to demonstrate and advance uh, innovative learning methods that address the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So we particularly, particularly are looking for uh, activities that are interdisciplinary and mission driven, which is also part of all our communities and uh, that involve diverse range of stakeholders that include students, uh, academics, companies and other externals like startups and public authorities. Uh, importantly, these activities must include uh, members from at least three different ELISA partner institutions from at least two uh, different member states. And by engaging in these activities, students can earn uh, ELISA credentials, which provide uh, academic recognition of their efforts in tackling the uh, challenges aligned with the SDGs. So ultimate goal is to uh, basically create learning experiences that, uh, that contribute to the society. Uh, moving on to evaluation criteria, uh, which are crucial for uh, creating a successful proposal for the joint call, we have three main criteria, as you can see in the, on the screen, uh, each with specific points uh, allocated. So excellence and impact is up to 40 points, which assesses the relevance, novelty, and societal impact of the, uh, of the proposed activities. We are uh, basically looking for activities that stand out in both academic and social contexts and demonstrating significant uh, interdisciplinary collaboration uh, rooting from, from the community or communities and a strong alignment with the community's mission on the SDGs. A learning ecosystem uh, criterion focuses on the innovative uh, teaching learning methods employed uh, particularly uh, challenge-based learning. The proposed challenges here uh, should be uh, exciting and relevant, motivating for, for our community and communities and external stakeholders. And activities should uh, ensure a balanced participation 
uh, of uh, stakeholders and uh, should have a transparent evaluation criteria and issue ERISA credentials, which include an assessment based on uh, ECTS credits. On the implementation side, we uh, envision that uh, we are going to evaluate the execution plan, uh, sustainability and budget of the activities, and we expect a well-defined plan that includes uh, like preparation reporting schemes with a final report that is going to be uh, submitted uh, after a while after the activity. And there will be a priority given to proposals that demonstrate this, uh, the potential for, uh, for sustainability and um, events can be reiterated in the, in the future. So yeah, in summary, this, uh, this call represents a great opportunity to foster collaboration and innovation uh, across Elisa communities. So thank you for your attention. And next, Sandor will be summarizing rules of funding and future goals. Okay, next slide. Very good. Sandor is from thank BMA. Go ahead, Sandor. Thank you, Maurice. Uh, so I would like to tell you a few words about the funding rules first. So all in all, we have 130,000 euro for this uh, joint call. And this is for all communities. And one community can get at most 10,000 euro for an activity. Uh, this uh, budget contains four items. The first is the organizational costs. This covers the uh, travel and accommodation for the organizers of an uh, activity and uh, uh, for the invited speakers of the event. And the uh, next item is the uh, personal cost. The personal cost is for the organizers, for example, the uh, local traveling and catering. And uh, there is a participation cost. This contains the travel and the accommodation of the uh, uh, attendees of the event, which are not, which are not the which are other than the organizers and. Uh, Maybe the, they are typically students from another uni other partner universities. This uh, covers their traveling and accommodation costs and maybe the registration fee if, uh, if necessary. And uh, there is another cost for attendees like uh, catering, like reserving lecture rooms or, or uh, advertising the activity, like uh, maybe posters and, and disseminate the activities like uh, like uh, conference proceedings or workshop papers uh, and so on. Uh, I think it's worth the overestimating the budget a little bit because uh, we don't know the future at the moment, but uh, you know, please note that one activity can get at most uh, 10,000 euros. And, uh, and uh, also note that uh, the budget is also an evaluation criteria in the in the joint call, so it's worth uh, optimizing uh, the the funds. And in the next slide, I would like to show you the the future plans. Okay, so there will be six uh, more joint calls, as you can see here. And uh, all in all, we have seven joint calls in this in this period. You can see we have two calls per year. Uh, each call will open at the 1st of September and 1st of February. But uh, this is just only a plan because we cannot see the future. And it uh, may happen that the rules and and uh, and uh, uh, funds will be changing. But we, we don't know yet, but this is our future plan. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sandy. Uh, so, sorry, Sandor. Uh, and we'll go to the next slide, and I'll invite uh, Camille Roger from PSL to talk. Thanks a lot, um, Maurice. Uh, I will share with you some uh, additional information, basic but key information, in fact. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I will start with the submission deadline and recall that it's uh, June, uh, the, on June the 15th, so you, you have almost one month still to, uh, to write your, your proposal and connect with uh, the good people within ELISA. 
Um, and we are supposed to announce the result just 15 days after that. So on, on June the 30th. Um, and for that, so you, you will need to send your proposal to uh, this email, communities at uh, elisa.eu. And you see here the word template you need to, to fill in. Uh, you are, we are not expecting a 50 page uh, project. It's not, it's not a, long, uh, a long project. It's something short, about five, six pages, something like that. You will see that the, the template is, uh, is, I think, um, easy to, to fill in. And do not hesitate if you have questions afterwards uh, on that. And on the next slide, I will just recall that um, you will have one year starting from the date of publication of the call. Uh, and that was uh, at the end of April. So you have time to develop your, your activity and to um, to um, use your, your budget if your project is a winning one. And you will not be surprised about that. When you have a call, you also have a reporting a report to, to submit and we will leave you about six weeks to uh, send an activity report at the end of your activity. So once your activity, your seasonal school, your hackathon, or no matter what it is about is finished, you will have few weeks to complete a template we will share with you afterwards. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Camille. Um, I think that's about it. Next slide. I just wanted to say we would be open for questions now. So we basically finished the, the main part of what we wanted to say a bit early. Um, you can raise your hand. You can post a question in the chat. And you can, afterwards, you can send an email to the communities. And kind of knew what we thought we would do since... Well, this is kind of uh, where the communities, both Sally and I receive the messages that go to communities at eliza.edu. But uh, sometimes we get several emails in one day and we can't answer them all. And a lot of them have to do with uh, getting more knowledge about Eliza, a lot of the communities, what the joint call is about, et cetera. So we suggest to open these cafe sessions the first one being May of next week. We've tried to do it some in the afternoon, some in the morning, and just to try it out. And this could maybe turn into something else as time goes by, but um, just about an hour where you can feel free to show up to the Zoom and um, ask questions about this call or other questions you may have uh, relating to the communities. It's necessary to register first so to make sure that people are kind of interested and we can make this open. So maybe if you go as a community, you hear questions from other communities as well. So we'll be doing that uh, throughout the month of May to kind of um, help out. And the questions not answered during the session will be appended to the FAQs, uh, which is on the website, eliza.eu, the, the specific um, page for a joint call three. So uh, I will start off with maybe a question uh, from um, who's who's would be the first one here? Guido Casinadri, I see. Hi, thank you very much. Um, I have a question concerning the participation costs. Just to be clear on this, because I had contrasting uh, opinions on this. So. Is it possible to organize um, like an event in which we don't, the organization don't pay the cost for the participants? So the participant expenses are up to them and we don't cover them, right? Because we don't have to put necessarily that uh, into the... Sure. Yes, I mean, uh, the, I think you can see the, the cost of the 10,000 euros. You can see more, as uh, Sandra was showing more, funds for organizational costs. So you might have to buy something more sophisticated or do something or travel somewhere. And the participation costs themselves. So this can be divided more or less as you like. So maybe in the okay. past for different joint calls, it's been 70% or more or less 
of the cost for participation and 30% organization. Maybe you can switch it and pay 70%, 30%. One of the like ideas- Zero percent? Zero percent participation. I think that's mm. a possibility. The only thing is in previous activities, sometimes we run into the problems of organizing an event and nobody shows up to make, to be, to be completely clear. So you want to be able to make sure enough people actually show up or guarantee, you know, you have at least three or five. Some communities are the opposite. They think they'll have too many people. So they put a limit and they say, okay, we're, we put a limit of 50, but we make sure we can pay 10. And so we, uh, what has happened sometimes is that an activity has been organized and only three students showed up, but it's been planned that 20 would show up. So uh, I don't know if my other colleagues have opinions about that. Uh, technically, there's no limit. You could put 0% participation, but uh, I would suggest to keep in mind that uh, if there are activities only organized by professors, sometimes we leave out the opinions of the students and, and they don't show up or they can't show up or something. Okay, thanks. Is that okay? Um, I see some questions in the chat, but I'm not sure which was the first one. Uh, am, I, am I right in thinking it's Gemma? Gemma Gassel? If one has an idea for project activity, how can I potentially find interested partners in other universities? Um, I don't know if I'm going to be answering all the questions, but I think w technically um, you, you should belong to a community, or if you're not belonging to a community, you either find one or create one. We've had four new proposals for new communities in the past two weeks, which I think is good news. Um, there, the, the, the best way to find potential partners would be through our, um, let's say, community contacts at each partner. So if we can put the slides back, uh, Daniel is always ready with the perfect slides. So these would be the contact points for um, what we call Work Packers 8, but basically the community ecosystem people uh, at each institution. So if you think, um, I was talking to a PhD student yesterday, he thinks he might have a contact at ITU. Well, you, you write to ITU and you say, I think you have a department that's related to project management. Can you help me with this? And, uh, and hopefully uh, you will get a reply. Um, Within your own community, there might be ways to find people. And you could also knock on the doors of maybe other community, other community leaders, which is an idea as well. I don't know if anybody has any other ideas for more package eight, but um, this would be the fastest way for me to answer that question. I'm going back up. And... Mm -hmm. Maybe we can also use these cafes as well to try to find other people who might be interested. And if the main person responsible for the activity does not belong to the institution that will host the activity, who manages the budget? If the main person responsible for the activity does not belong to the institution. Um, good question. Normally, I think we're expecting that, not like if you're the hosting institution, you will um, you will be managing the budget, but this also depends on what you are spending the money on. So I think uh, if it was, let me use an example. If it was the UPM organizing something in uh, Turkey in ITU, well, the activity receives the money. And it's not the institution that receives the money. So each different partner will say, okay, in the activity, 8,000 euros was for me for hosting. So ITU will get those 8,000 euros. And then the 2,000 remaining euros will be spent by UPM or PSL or FAU. 
So it's we've we've changed the system this time where there's a let's say a common bank of money, and this will be distributed when the activity gets approved. We will send out the money to the different partners corresponding to what costs they have said they will have. You know? I think if I I can explain that probably a bit better if I practice, but uh, uh, the budget will be managed uh, depending on the cost of each partner. Okay, I don't know. That was Javier Garcia. Um, Carlos Paredes, he says, oops, uh, could we mix Eliza activity with other European activities such as Athens Course Week? Yeah, actually, that was a question I got this morning. Um, I believe so. I don't know. I see Sophia shake, uh, nodding her head. Uh, I would say, I mean, depending on the cost of your activity, you could see this as to create a new activity and but you might not have enough money, or you could combine this as kind of seed uh, money to to help you to um, do something new or just overlap on something you're already doing, okay? So we've done this as well at the UPM where um, there could be some money from Elisa to help out a course that's actually being run to make it more interdisciplinary and international. Or you could set up an activity that's completely new, which might be more costly. So I think in this question to answer Carlos, I think you can mix the Eliza activity as long as you include the basic sequence, community mission, activity, and credentials. So we don't want to lose those three things. Your community mission, activities, and credentials. And could be also related to a conference, a course, a talk. Uh, Andreas Stoborn, uh, can you give a few examples of activities? Yeah, we should maybe create, we could create a, um, a bank or an example of all these activities. Um, as I said, there are kind of new activities. For example, there's a group here of space engineers who create a new thing in January where they um, invite people, not only ELISA students, but anybody who wants to participate in a new way of um, looking at challenge-based problems with space exploration. And they come here and they're each presented a challenge, but they also visit different installations and they have a week or so to um address that challenge no and that would be one example i don't know if i can provide a list but that's a good idea maybe for new proposals you can also have a look at the web page and different uh, events and there's the narrator part of elisa where different students talk about their different participation in different activities so i think you can have a look at that Oh, sorry, Danielle. Please see the website post on Joint Call with Joint Plus. Example is back there. Okay. Uh, is it possible to get funding for non ELISA invited speakers and attendees? Max 10% of estimated budget for externals? Yes, I think we agreed on that. And uh, Danielle. If the implementation of proposal requires to develop an app for mobile devices, is it possible to get funding for that, this issue? If yes, it should go in other costs or funding. I don't know, I might need some help there. What do you think? Uh, I've, I've heard about, you know, for example, if you have to pay for a certain software license, if you could develop an app, I think this can be included. One thing that Camille was mentioning and uh, was that we will be have about two weeks to go through their proposals and some of them unfortunately may not be funded, but we will be able to provide some feedback on the proposals that maybe were not funded. And then you will have another opportunity in September, another opportunity in February. So uh, we talked this among ourselves in Word Package 8 um, 
and we're kind of learning at the same time. But I think the answer, my short answer to the question of my money is would be yes. Let's go back to uh, the hands up and let Ramsey Bayoglu. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ramsey Bayoglu. I am a, I am a PhD student at uh, in, uh, Istanbul Technical University. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, this session has been recorded. Where and how can I watch it again? Okay. <laughs> Well, that's good. You want to see us again? That's that's positive. <laughs> okay. Uh, At least uh, I need the, the the PowerPoint presentation to to watch. Yes. Yeah. The both the slides and the recording will be available, and I believe Danielle can correct me if I'm wrong. It will be included on this general web page we have in Eliza.eu about the joint call three. So there, there are links to the coffees, there's links to the registration for today, and there should be a link to the slide, the slide desk. And then Daniel, he's pretty fast. Uh, so we will be having, uh, we'll be on the YouTube channel uh, as well. So you, you should be able to find it either on the YouTube channel for Eliza or on the specific page we have for Joint Call 3 on the Eliza.eu webpage. Okay, and the second question is, uh, besides the mother tongue and the English, is there an advantage to speak a second foreign language, like German, for example? But when, uh, the question is, refer to participants, or do you mean to different people organizing the activity? No, no, I mean for the participants. Yeah, this is something we've been looking at of... Um, Participants and activities, each community or each activity organizer can choose, uh, you know, kind of their, I would just say, uh, necessities or what they are looking for in the students to participate. So if you feel that you need bilingual students for some kind of activity, you can, you can set that up. Right. But it really depends on the activity. I see. Okay. But, but in general, it is possible. I mean, it's an advantage, so it's not possible. I guess you're saying you, if you organize an activity, yeah, and you want participants to come to the activity, whether you can ask them to speak two languages or whether it's an advantage no, for no. them. No, standard, everybody speaks English, but for example, to communicate with the German universities, we need to be easier if I speak German. Oh, okay. Well, I kind of that's up to you, but basically the 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 idea here with the communities is mostly English, so most of the advantage would be English. But in your case, it would depend on the activity. If you're thinking of the activity you're hosting in Turkey would need to be bilingual, well, then you can put that in your your session. But I think we want to attract as many people as possible, and the standard language would be English. Okay, fine. That, that was my question and answer. Fine. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. I'm going to go back to the text now. Um, will a simplified contract framework be in place so that money can be transferred between universities? We've been working on this with what we call Word Package 1. And uh, it's basically stipulated, I think, uh, written down in a deliverable we, we handed in a couple weeks ago. Um, but as far as uh, Joint Call 3 is concerned, there is a global bank of money, which happens to be at the UPM. And starting after June 30th, the people who get the activity can start to spend. They will inform their local uh, partners and the partners will uh, know that they, have a, they can spend a certain amount of money. So there's not a contract per se, but uh, this is the kind of the field of work package one, which is organizing the funds. But uh, I, I know that it's been already organized. Okay. And so the YouTube, you'll find a content. Okay, uh, Guido. Yeah, uh, my question is, I have two questions. Well, the first one is uh, if it's possible to use also external funds 
and not just ELISA funds, but also external ones to fund the activity, which is still ELISA based. And the second one concerns a question in the chat, because one mentioned that only 10% of total budget can be used for external speakers. So it means that I can spend only uh, 1,000 euros for, for example, the costs of accommodation and travel of external speakers. But so th this is true that that's the rule. Um, yes, if if uh, if Sally said it, yeah, I think it's the rule. No, I think this is something we agreed upon so that we were making sure there's like an Eliza flavor about the the activity itself. So we don't want to be in a position where most of the people participating in the the course or what have you, the activity, are members that are outside of the ELISA partnership. So it is a, it is possible, for example, last year, I myself organized uh, an activity in Zurich. So we have UPM Zurich, but we were able to invite somebody from London to give a talk, but not, you know, we had the, mostly it was London and, and, and Zurich involved, no? So I'm sorry, mostly it was the Madrid and Zurich involved in the thing. So that was, I think, like a stopgap there. I don't know, Sally, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what we agreed. Yeah, that's that's what we have as a wording in the in the call. So 10% of the estimated budget. Maybe we can make it clear whether that is 10% of the estimated budget because this is the exact wording, or 10% of the maximum that we can give. So According to what we have uh, stated right now, it, I mean, if if the proposer is requesting eight thousand, then it's going to be eight hundred uh, euros for the for the externals. Maybe we can make uh, a confirmation for that because the wording, existing wording, is actually stating that it's ten percent of the estimated number. Thanks. And for concern, the fact that they can, we can ask also external funds combined with the 10,000 euros, it's possible, right? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, actually even better. I mean, uh, some of these activities, like what I was talking about, this space agency, etc., they have a lot of funding, for example, from companies. And this helps out, the 10,000 yeah. euros helps out. So in this uh, case, if we get funds for another, for another whatever, we can cover for, with these costs the external speaker or sure. For so, example, yeah, yeah, you okay, can use the okay, okay, speaker, yeah, okay, okay. Thanks. Yeah, you, this can be used as complementary, but uh, that probably needs to be explained in the in the proposal document that in which we have the sustainability budget section. So you basically uh, need to explain what. Uh, which source is providing what and what is uh, the it is a joint call is it being used for? Okay, thanks. Yeah, I think as you can see um, from different questions, I think the the whole idea of an activity within the Eliza communities is a, is very broad. So you can go from a talk to uh, courses to different masters projects etc so this was part of our difficulty and why we've been talking about it since january about how to focus the joint call to make it challenge based but i repeat what, what we really want to see in the proposal is that you're linking your community mission so there has to be a community behind it that is organizing an activity that's challenge based and this is leading to credentials so we have one two three so I, we really need to be seeing this uh, in the in the proposal itself. Okay, I don't see any more questions on the chat. I see another question, Ramsey Bayoglu, yes? No, 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 I want to ask another question. Yeah. Can I? Sure. Can I say, okay. Uh, when told me about the funds, I just uh, remember to ask that question again. Uh, is it advantageous not to ask any funds? That means if I want to participate and cover all my costs by myself, is it an advantage or does it make any difference? Well, 
Uh, no, I think maybe you're you're focused. You're thinking that the I think maybe you're thinking that this this call is actually for you or your community to create an activity. Yes. So you have to create an activity that other people will participate in. You know okay. what I mean? So you're you're asking for money to organize an activity. So this could be, for example, a summer school. So you, you and uh, your thesis director or your community, I'm not sure if you belong in a community, if you're a member of a community, sorry. Uh, well, when talking about the funds, you mentioned or somebody mentioned that it covers the cost of the traveling, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, if I cover all this goes by myself. Okay, that's that's fine. But this again will depend on the community, on the mm -hmm. activity, sorry, and the activity accepts you. So they can yeah. accept you and you can say you can go without funding. That's fine. Ah, okay, fine. Thank you very much. Okay. And I don't see too many other questions. So I can basically, oh, there's another question. Would these joint calls be a good opportunity to make international? I can't see the whole thing. My previous comms based learning experience developed in the frame of Reto's, yeah. Maybe not everybody knows, but the UPM has kind of stimulated challenge-based learning projects individually on a local level. Uh, and we also have had funding on a local level for ELISA communities, which are led by professors from the UPM. So this question is more technically more for UPM, but I would say yes. The short answer to Maria Jesus would be yes, to increase the international part of challenge-based learning that we have done at the UPM to make it more international. That would be that would be perfect. Um, Maria Luisa is saying preparation of a BIP blended intensive program activity can be funding. The BIP activity should be should take place in the next year. We mentioned that, uh, and I think Guido also was referring, if there's other funding, and there was another question about Athens, if there's other sources of funding, that's no problem. This can be combined with that, with an Athens or a BIP. Um, if you organize an activity where you can pay for five participants, Another 15 or 20 participants can come with other Erasmus funding from different institutions. So this is this is fairly open. Yes, I see Cecilia Sabo. Sheila, Sheila Sabo. Hello. Um, I'm from Budapest, Budapest University of Technology, and I work in the Center for Modern Languages. And my question would concern uh whether there are any restrictions about the topic or the theme of uh, new communities. Uh, we would like to host an event related to artificial intelligence and machine translation. And I was wondering if, uh, because, well, we work within a, an engineering university, but it's not strictly speaking uh, related to engineering our topic. So would it be a problem or would that be okay? if uh, we would obviously find partners from different universities who work in this field. I know yeah. that Geneva has, and some other universities like uh, Madrid also have these departments. Yeah, that's right. Um, for me, it sounds interesting. Uh, now in this uh, kind of new phase of ELISA, what we're trying to do is kind of find a system where we receive new proposals and we kind of evaluate them, and then we provide you with feedback. So we're doing this with four new proposals at the moment. Uh, one of the most difficult things is to find for you would be to find partners. And the idea itself, um, we assess it as kind of the Eliza community ecosystem uh, team, where we would assess it all together and make sure it's not too overlapped with communities that exist already. So there's, you know, there are more than 50, but we are very open. 
and to have new communities, which is uh, which is uh, we're trying to stimulate as well. No? Um, there again, if you would like to create a new community and want to find new partners, we have these kind of local um, representatives for communities and the different partners, so you can start there. Okay. And and then once you have the idea and the, the partners, it's just sending it through the registration form that's on the web page, and then okay. it will be assessed. Uh, we're, get, we're Package 8 members. We meet every week on Fridays, so technically it shouldn't take too long. Okay. Some of the previous ones have taken a bit longer than a few weeks because we're now developing new things on the platform and there have been a series of holidays, but the idea would be in a short time, you get some feedback about that. All right. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Thank you. Uh, another question on the chat. Is it possible to propose an activity that is blended? So local activities are blended with online gatherings with different universities are involved. In this case, Notre and New York. Could this say? Yes, definitely. I think we wrote in the call this can be hybrid, this can be only online, this can be in-person. You can maybe understand that we want to have credentials, communities, activities, credentials, but these credentials, if you look on and you can find information on the YouTube for ELISA, of what is an ELISA credential, have different levels of impact. So obviously if it's online, depending on how it's organized, it might have a lower impact, but if it's in person and lasts for several days or weeks, it might have a higher impact. So we we want to increase the number of credentials and we, we would like maybe more credentials with a high impact, but we can also have lots of credentials with a lower impact. So we see no problems with different formats of the, of the courses itself. And what are the criteria of activities limited by subject matters? Please be pleased to have your comment on it. Okay. I don't know, for different subjects, I don't think ELISA 2 especially has expanded to include uh, humanities, not just engineering, social sciences. So for the moment, I mean, we do have a bias towards technology and engineering, but uh, I don't, we haven't constricted or restricted the themes for it by different subject areas, really. I guess uh, just interdisciplinarity is important. So if you can highlight that, that, that should be okay. Yeah, that's true. Um, one of the things that we put in the call too is it's it's international, but there are several other inter words in there, no international, intercultural, and interdisciplinary. Um, so it's something new, it's something that maybe is not easy for you to do on your own in your own institute. You need kind of international and interdisciplinary kind of aspect to it. So I would agree. Uh, Andreas. Yes, thank you. Um, in my point of view, it looks like it's the most difficult part is to find fitting partners from Eliza. Um, isn't there something like a dashboard where where you could advertise yourself, for example, or or like a, a virtual cafe where we could meet and just talk? Because it's yes. it's really difficult. If I'm from the Zurich University of Applied Science. Personally, I don't think I just know one person that's that's you yeah. um, in the whole okay. network. So how to how to get over this hurdle? That's the okay. big question. Yeah, I would say um, I would start off with uh, asking or say, if you have an idea, uh, you could send the idea for the community to the different representatives and the different partners. So... Uh, this is the slide we put up before. I don't know, Tanya, you can put it up again. So each uh, institution, each partner institution has a representative for communities. In the case of the UPM, it's me. In Sid Jave, it's Michele, who meets with us every week. Um, 
we can send to Gianfranco. So uh, you can send to these different people. You can check out the universities through their web pages. PSL, for example, is very big. So you can write a message to Camille, for example, and say, this is our idea. Um, could you help me to find partners? So I think this is kind of also giving relevance to these people who are, this, they were established to help to do this. So this is what my, will be my main, mm -hmm. my main message here, I think. Uh, and I, I myself within, I mean, with, on the webpage for Eliza Communities, there's different ways of getting started. And Sally, I think, have more information about the InnoCore. There's an InnoCore um, network. There is an InnoCore networking platform on which you can post a project idea. And it's going to actually uh, go into an algorithm and it's going to find similarities with the already posted projects. And it's going to give you the, uh, the most relevant project ideas and people who have posted these, these ideas. And these can be uh, potential people you can reach out to uh, work together. Sorry, and the link, the link is on the chat, Isabel and Tanya just shared. Okay, so this is, uh, maybe you can explain it a bit more how that was developed or not. It's with, developed within ELISA. Yeah, it is actually developed as part of InnoCore project that is the research kind of a being of Elisa, uh, which is going to uh, end this month. And as part of that, the main idea is to uh, to create kind of clusters of uh, research based on people posting research ideas and this algorithm working in the background that is trying to create these uh, sort of uh, uh, these cluster formations that are potentially source of uh, future research ideas or collaboration opportunities that may arise among among partners. Okay, and the link for that is also on the web page for elisa.eu for getting started. There's a link to the InnoCore. Yeah, you have a link on the community platform Get Started page and in the chat right now. Also, Isabel just shared the, the link. Another answer to Andreas is we have suggested, well, we are now changing, in the middle of changing the IT platform. So the IT platform right now is based on WordPress, which is not easy to handle. It's not like it has a data warehouse where you can go and uh, it's easy to manage the different aspects of the web page. So we're now changing, and one of the main things we'd like to change in the future is to facilitate this kind of contact. So there should be a page uh, within the new platform where you can send your ideas and other people can look and try to find them. Uh, in my own experience as well, you could also look, depending on the institution, look at their web pages, find their departments, and try to just write to people directly. If those people do not respond, then feel free to contact again the Work Package 8 representative for that institution and say, Camille, I have written to this person uh, and I haven't received the response. Could you help me to contact them directly or what do you think? Or something? So, uh, and last but not least, we have suggested to have these cafes or coffees where um, hopefully different people might show up, maybe new people looking for partnership. And we decided to divide them up in about two hours a week in different, and some in the morning, some in the afternoon, where you can come and then propose your activity again, share it with other members from Work Package 8, and, and maybe other people who are attending. So we realize this is something that's a bit difficult, but we're working on it as well. And also existing community platform, if you have any ideas and having difficulty in finding partners, uh, you can just search through the existing communities who might be interested in these ideas. And yeah. you can reach out to their contact persons and uh, they may actually uh, be willing to work with you to realize the projects. Yeah. We have a, we have a case of... Uh a large community where some members of the large community uh, 
who would like to maybe form a new community, which is not illegal, you know. So that's a possibility, and which is kind of related to what Sally was saying as well. Okay. Um, I still saw well, an interesting project on this network and facility would be to fine tune with the LMM with our university directors. Yes. Yeah, we're uh, kind of starting this anew. This will be also, I don't know if we'll get that far this year, but the idea would be that we have a list of the communities, we have a list of the community members, maybe we have different types of members, and then we have a list of people who are participating in activities, the students, and they could be in more than one activity, but there's kind of like a, a, a traceability of communities, community members, activity providers, and students, which will help facilitate uh, in bestowing or giving the credentials. But there's a team now in the University of uh, Bucharest working on this. So hopefully this will improve over time. Okay, I don't see any more questions, but I think we've provided a basic overview of if you have any more questions, where you can ask them. And um, we can maybe leave it there. And anybody who would like to can come next Friday at two o'clock. We will have a meeting uh, with well anybody who shows up, really. We can discuss things further or how you're going in the process of of developing your application. Okay, any last comments? Sally, Daniel, no? I wanna say hello to Alberto as well, who's here, uh, who's joining us today. I don't know if anybody- Thank you, thank you, Boris. Yeah, I think it was a great session uh, with so much, uh, so many people interesting, interested, and uh, we hope that we can receive uh, strong proposals uh, for those that uh, don't get their proposal funded. There will be another opportunity. So, thank you, thank you so much, Sally, Maurice, and Daniel for preparing such a wonderful presentation today. Very clear. Okay, thank you, Alberto. All right, I guess we'll leave it there. And you know, we'll see you soon. Yeah. Ciao. Bye bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye -bye. Nice weekend to all. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice week. Bye. Bye.